due to the live stream broadcast of the Abundant Love Church under the leadership of Bishop Gary Bush Sr. And we want to give a shout out for him, the angel of this house, amen? Let's say happy Father's Day to the angel of this house. Come on, give God a clap of praise, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to stand to your feet quickly. Stand to your feet. We're ready to go into a time of worship. I want you to look over at someone and say, God is good. And you look good. You look good today. Tell them to shake off everything that may hold you back from praising him today. Because we're going to have a good time in God. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, I'm going to have a good time today. A blessed time today. A magnificent time today. Because the king of glory is in this house today. Hallelujah. He's in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to call Cynthia Franks up for our praise and worship. Let's give God a clap of praise as she come forward. Amen. And I'm Evangelist Carolyn Sherrell, and I'll be your MC for today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you love Jesus, put your hands together. Let's bless him. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody.
Jesus. Come on, say nobody. Nobody can do me like Jesus. Go on, give somebody a high five and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, find somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, find somebody and give God a high five. Hallelujah. Tell them, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, don't stop worshiping him. Don't look at me. Look at him. This is about him. Hallelujah. The king of glory. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. But can't nobody do us like you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for being our Father today, God. We thank you, God, hallelujah. Because, Lord, we can't do nothing without you, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for waking us up in our right mind today, God. We thank you, God, for giving us the activity of our limbs today, God. We thank you, God, for drawing us here today, God. Lord, I pray that your glory will fill this place, Heavenly Father. Touch us even now, Heavenly Father. Stir up your Holy Spirit inside of us, God. For, Lord, you are worthy of all praise, worthy of all honor, worthy of all the glory, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for it, God. Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that if there's any sick here today, God, that you will touch their bodies, God. Let them know, God, that you have brought them in a place where they can receive healing. Brought them into a place where they can receive love, God. Brought them into a place where they can receive joy, Heavenly Father. Even those that are watching on the stream, God. I pray, God, that you touch them even now, God. Let them know, God, that they will hear a word today. A word of life, God. Quicken their spirits, Heavenly Father. Let them know, God, that you are a God of peace and a God of love. Have your way, God. Somebody say, have your way. Somebody say, have your way. Have your way in me today. Hallelujah. For you alone are worthy, God. We bask in your presence, God. We die to self, Father. That you alone may be glorified. And we thank you for the victory we already have in this, in this place today, God. Touch the man of God, Heavenly Father. We thank you, God, for him today, God. We thank you for him being our divine spiritual father, God. Have your way, God. For it's only in you, Lord God, that we live and move and have our being today, God. And we thank you, God, for being a mighty God, a divine comforter. And we love you, Father. Lord, we pray, God, that signs and wonders follow the preached word today, God. Use them mightily, Lord God, for your glory. Let them stand strong, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for it, God. These are the other things we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Let all the people say amen. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. Come on, put your hands together, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy of all praise. Do you love the Lord today? Yes. Come on, give somebody a handshake and say, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. For he alone is worthy to be praised. At this time, I have Deacon Cal Van to come with our reading of the scripture. Amen. Amen. It's scripture time. That don't mean you got to stop praising. We had a conversation with him through prayer. Now we're going to read his word and tell us what we need to do. We're coming from Psalms 103. We're going to read 8 through 13. I know some people got Bibles, some people got tablets, some people got phones. So when you have it, please say amen. Because we want to do this together. Psalms 103, 103. 8. Through 13. All right. Verse 8 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. 
For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitches his son, his children, or pitieth his children, I'm sorry, so the Lord pitieth them from pitieth them that fear him. That is Psalms 103, 8 through 13. May the Lord have a blessings on the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his word. Amen. Now we're going to have Sister Drew for announcements. Let's praise the Lord. We don't have to get quiet. Amen. Amen. The Lord is still in this place, even during the announcements. Amen. We would like to say good morning to everyone and again welcome you to our Sunday morning worship. We thank each of you who pressed their way to service this morning, and we would also like to thank all of our viewers who are viewing us over the airwaves. If you happen to be in the Fort Wayne area, our live streams are open. You are welcome to come and join us in our regular worship services in the sanctuary. Our regular stream times are on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m. We do have a Sunday school live stream. At 9.50 a.m. we have in session Sunday school. And our morning worship begins at 10.45 a.m. On Mondays, early in the morning at 8 o'clock, we do have a motivating moment video that you may listen to and up, to uplift your week. And at 6.30 p.m. on Mondays, we do have corporate prayer. On Wednesday nights, we do have intercessory prayer at 6 o'clock p.m. And then our Disciples Academy Bible study is at 6.30 p.m. If you happen to miss any of our live streams, we are located on Abundant Love Church Facebook page and YouTube channel, AL Ministries, where we are archived. Our upcoming events include, we have been surveying through the epistles of the New Testament. For the next couple of weeks, we will continue our study in the book of Romans. On Wednesday evening, we will be studying chapter 15. Next week, our plan is to go over chapter 16. If you are not on our email list and want to survey through the epistles with us during Bible study, you can comment below with your email address, or you may email us at abundantlove@frontier.com to receive a bi-weekly study outline. <clears throat> our quarterly outreach, Soul Saturday, will be held on June 24th here at the church. We will have a free car wash and it will be accompanied with prayer. You are more than welcome to come out and get your car washed. Have a clean car and a clean spirit, amen. We will be traveling to Dupree Memorial <coughs> on June 25th at 11 o'clock a.m. So we will not be in the sanctuary next Sunday. We will be at Dupree Memorial. Our own bishop will preach the word for the 23rd pastoral anniversary. We will be here for Sunday school, but we will be at Dupree at 11 a.m. Our birthdays for the week on June 17th, our own Malachi Allen <coughs> at a birthday. <coughs> Amen. Our sick and recovering include Kiara Casey. Albert Jewell, and we still have special prayer for Raphael Martin, Travion Hilliard, Joseph Gray, and we're glad to see Jackie Jones with us on this morning. And also Sister Callie, we're glad that the Lord blessed her. She was in an accident and the Lord, hey, she's here. Amen. 
These are all our announcements, so at this time I will turn it over to the hands of the praise team. Come on, put your hands together for the praise team. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. How many know that the Lord will make a way somehow? Amen. 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 The Lord will make a way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many glad to be among the land of the living on today? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know we say happy Father's Day to our natural father, but we want to worship our heavenly father Hallelujah. on this morning. Song yes. says, Jesus, we worship and we praise yes. your name. Yes. We lift our yes, voices. We do. Hallelujah. Yes. We worship. Jesus. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. We lift our voices. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. And as our voices sing. Come to watch us. 
Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. Hallelujah. How many know we worship the Lord? Come on, lift your hands. Say, we worship you, Lord. One more time. Say, we worship you. Hallelujah. Come on, I give him a wave of offering. Hallelujah. How many know we worship the Lord? Glory to God. We come to worship you. Oh, Lord. We come to worship you. Hosanna. Hosanna. We come. We come to worship you. Oh, Lord. We come to worship. Jesus, we worship. End it there. End it. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. Hey, hey, Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, we worship and we praise your name. Come on, clap your hands right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
can speak the word. this morning are you encouraged this morning hallelujah the song said speak over yourself in the Lord <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> Woo! I'm encouraged I'm encouraged I'm encouraged amen we want to thank the choir and the praise team. At this time, we have a presentation by our own mother, Vera Drew. Amen. Amen. And she's coming. Come. Yeah. All right. Ms. Drew. Drew. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. Hallelujah. We know that today is Father's Day. And uh, I got to see. Uh, I was doing a lot of work trying to figure out something, and I found a poem online that I think fits our fathers. And it's called A Father's Faith. A father's love, a reflection of God's grace. His faith shining brightly in every embrace. With words of wisdom and a heart that forgives, he guides his children to the life God gives. He teaches us patience, compassion, and trust to walk in the footsteps of the one who is just. Through his actions, he reveals God's plan, a faithful father, a spiritual man. On this Father's Day, we honor and pray for the fathers who lead us on the righteous way. 
May God's blessing surround them each day as they aspire us to walk in his perfect way. I have, baby, would you? On oh, last week, Pastor, the children made special cards for you. And, they, and these are their own individual thoughts. I didn't coax them. I didn't tell them what to write. I said, you write from your heart what you feel about your pastor. So, Pastor, and I, to make, because Pastor always wears a suit, I had his cards made to look like he had on his suit. <laughs> And this is all I have. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Amen and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It, I'm happy it's Father's Day. Uh, let me just throw this in. When Mother's Day come around, we celebrate real good, don't we? Amen. Don't forget us on Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I, our next our accent speaker this morning is going to be Minister Gary Bush. <laughs> All right. I was told to, um, first I want to give an order to God. Um, I want to give honor to my father, literally. Happy Father's Day to him and to all the fathers in here. I was told to get about three or five minutes of Psalms 103, and I have the NIV version of verse 13, and it just says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So compassion is a lot of different verbs wrapped into that word because a great father has to know when to be firm, when to be funny, when to um, let the leash go a little bit, when to pull them in, um, has to be mature enough to know what the child can handle. Um, a father just doesn't, like I said in um, Sunday school, you don't just give the keys to a Benz to a 10-year-old. You know, they have to learn how to ride a tricycle first. And then once the training wheels get off, you know, you have to let them kind of guide themselves on the bike. You have to know when to stop them from falling. You have to know when to let them fall because if you keep stopping them from falling, they won't know how to handle the fall. Um, you have to know when to put your thumb down and push them because you see stuff in them, but you can't push them too hard and break their spirits because then they might be great at it, but then if they get pushed too hard, they'll quit because it's not fun for them. A father knows um, when to lay the law down. Um, my children know when I say something and I mean it, I just say their whole name and they go. And they know when I'm just playing around, just joking. The father knows how to do both. You can't be all thumbs down, can't be a dictator. You can't be all loosey goosey because then they won't respect you when you're really serious. A father knows the difference between different things. Um, a father, like our bishop said in Sunday school, you can't just correct them and then leave it alone. You have to constructively correct them. So not just whoop them and go out the room. You have to whoop them and then tell them why you whooped them and tell them how you have to get it better so that hopefully they will learn from the whooping that they got so that the next time they think about doing that, they will remember the whooping. Um, a father, a great father, most importantly, gives. Our Heavenly Father gave us his only son. A father thinks about himself last and does everything for his children. A father sacrifices. That's the biggest thing. The compassion of a father is the sacrifice. 
Can I not eat so that my children can eat? Can I not buy this for myself because my children need this? Even though I want this and I deserve this because I'm tired from my job, my children need this, my children want this, I'm going to save myself so that I can buy for them. That's what the compassion of a good father does. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give him another hand. Amen. All right. Now let's put our hands together for the fathers in the room. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says the children are the heritage of the Lord, and so it is the blessing of the Lord. Anytime God allows men and women to come together and produce children. Amen. Incidentally, all fathers don't have children. Some without children help to father other children so that they go in the right direction. How many know that old African proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child? And it is true. Uh, certainly you need people who will reinforce what you teach in the home. Amen. Amen, somebody. Man, sometimes my grandchildren come to me and say, Papa, we want to do this. I say, wait a minute. Let me check with mom and dad. And if it's okay with mom and dad, then it's okay with me. So we have to reinforce, amen, what is taught in the home. Amen. All right. We want you to prepare yourselves to give now. Okay. I heard. I, I heard. Cricket, crickets there for a minute. All right. It's an opportunity. It's a blessing to be able to give. So we want you to prepare yourselves to give. Amen. Here comes Sister Natasha with Gabriella, Raffaella, Sasparilla. Amen. And Lady Kai is with us today to help us receive our offering today. Amen. All right. If you are in the sanctuary and you would like to give, if you're going to use cash or you're going to use a check, you need an envelope. And so if you just make known now, just a little wave of the hand, if you need an envelope, they will make sure that you get an envelope. Would you put today's date, June 18th, your name, uh, if you're a medical doctor, don't use your prescription writing today. Amen. Write your name very legibly so that the finance people are able to attribute your contribution to the right place. Amen. All right. Incidentally, if you also have your debit card or your credit card, Sister Natasha has the card slider and she will come to your location and receive your contribution that way. In fact, if you need the card slider now, why don't you just wave at her? just for a minute so she can spot you, know where you are, come to your location. Amen? Amen. And then for this uh, technological generation uh, that does many things, including banking and giving and the transfer of funds by your mobile phone, there are two applications that we use. We use Givelify, and we can be found as the Abundant Love Church in... Fort Wayne, Indiana. So uh, you can use that application if you would like to give, not just those of you all in the sanctuary, those of you all that are watching by stream, uh, you can use that application, Givelify. And then the second app that we use, we use Cash App. And our Cash App hashtag is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. Uh, it's not case sensitive, so uh, if you say Abundant Love Church, type in the first part of it. It should bring it up, and you will know that you have Abundant Love Church because that emblem that you see here on the front of our uh, pulpit, that will come up with your contribution. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's be a blessing to the church. How many know that the church needs your support? Amen. There is no church without pastor. And there is no pastor without congregation. It takes each of us doing our part to make the church work. Amen. Tell me how you feel 
if they tell three of you all to get the job done and you're one of the three and the other two people who are supposed to be helping you sit down and drink lemonade while you work. How does that make you feel? That doesn't make you feel very well, does it? Amen. Okay, now we don't want you to do like they said in the Sunday school lesson this morning. Don't call down fire from heaven. Burn, burn them up. Amen. We have the wrong spirit if we do that, but, but it makes you feel some sort of way. Are y'all ready for this? Y'all ain't ready for this. It makes you feel some sort of way if you're doing what it takes to support it, and then other people are not. So I'm asking you today, do your fair share. Well, I don't have $20. That's why I don't give. Well, give the 10 you have. Well, I don't have $10. Give the five you have. Okay. Give whatever. As the Lord has prospered you to give, that's what you want to give. Now, can I say something? Some of us, the Lord has prospered us very well. And because the Lord has prospered us very well, we have to carry the lion's portion of the church. I got a couple of scattered amens, but, but we're going to be in Romans chapter number 15 on Wednesday. And it starts out by saying, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmity of the weak. It means we that are stronger, we that have more, we carry a little more weight. But how many know that it takes all of us to work together? Amen. So get your nickels together and get your dimes together. And that's what the old folk used to say. Get your nickels and your dimes together. And let's be a blessing to the church. Amen. Amen. All right. Let us pray. Uh, Father, it is in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we thank you for this opportunity to give. It is an opportunity. First of all, it's our opportunity to obey your word. And there is always a blessing when we obey your word. No good thing will you withhold from them that walk upright. And so, Father, we expect you to pour blessings upon us because we obey what you've said. We will not come before the Lord empty-handed, but we will set some aside as a sacrifice to give back a portion of what you've given to us. And then, Lord, it is an opportunity to start in motion the promise of the Lord because you said if we gave it would be given to us and so we give today fully expecting this to come back to us good measure pressed down shaken together and running over let men give into our bosoms we thank you for every giver remember these that would give if they had it bless them that on the next occasion they're able to give. And even these that uh, faithfully support by stream, these even now that are watching by stream and sending support to this ministry, don't forget them. Remember them. Remember their home and the things that they're trying to establish in the name of the Lord. We do love you and we thank you and we give your name praise in Jesus name and the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen. And amen. All right, everybody's given their coming. All right, everybody's given. Everybody's given. I want to praise and lift you up. I want to praise you, 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 lift you up. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters to me. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters to me. I want to praise and lift you up. Come on. I want to praise you, lift you up. 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 Nothing. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters to me. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters to 
me. I want to praise you. I want to praise you with all my heart, with all my soul and my mind. Just want to tell you how great you are. You are the star of my life. I'm alive, I'm alive. clapping your hands what's going on in here this father's day you're supposed to be happy today all right bless you bless you amen how many know the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to how many generations look at somebody say that includes you amen aren't you glad that the mercies of the Lord don't run out on us. Amen. Okay, all right. Incidentally, our program right now calls for our second accent speaker today. Would you all receive our master of ceremonies and accent speaker, Elder Greg Smith? Amen and praise God. Amen and praise God giving honor to God this morning, who is the head of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, I'll tell you like this, it's a blessing to be alive today. It's a blessing to be alive today. Uh, I don't know what you've been through in life, but he's carried me through much. Amen. And I'm yet still in learning how to do better and leave some things alone. Amen. To go forward in him. Amen. As I get started, I got to honor the angel of this house, yes, Bishop Gary Bush, who's been a father figure to me all of these 20 some years. Amen. Yes. I have learned much from him and still learning. And he's a man I don't mind serving. Amen. Amen. One thing my father taught us was if you run with somebody in a certain capacity and they're doing some things and you are not, when something go down, it's just like you would work. If, let me explain it a little bit better. If I'm drinking slits malt liquor, and somebody else that I'm running with is drinking slits malt liquor every day, I ain't putting the drinkers down, but it's just like I'm drinking it when you see us going down the street. Amen, Amen. cause who you run with, who you run with, who you hang around, who your best friend is, kind of puts a complexion on you. Yeah. So if you're righteous and they're not, and you're not trying to bring them over, 
then you consider this just the same as they are. Amen. And I ain't putting nobody down this morning because I, I ain't in the right shoes for that. Amen. 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 Because I'm just saying following this man has really brought me many blessings, encouragement, uh, growth in my life, my personal life. Amen. Amen. I have a scripture to read. <laughs> Please stand to your feet. Didn't mean to go there, but I went. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 103. I'll read in your hearing. Verses 12 and 13. And it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, as a father has compa com compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, that's, that's, I could have went up a couple more scriptures because that's a powerful chapter and in the book of Psalms, Psalms 103. Um, kind of going through a few things this morning. This is my first Father's Day being without my father. Amen. But I thank God for him. Uh, he was an awesome father. He was he didn't spare the ride at all. <laughs> and just to go back, he was the type where we, we grew up in a neighborhood that had a lot of families, and anybody could whoop your kids and call you, and you then you get another whooping when they call your house. But he was, if it was seven kids playing in the yard and somebody did something wrong, all seven of us got a whooping. All seven of us got a whooping. He did it. That's all right. You, you did something somewhere anyway. Let me come on in here, you know, and get you, for, get you, <laughs> you know, anyway. Because, and what it taught me was, as I grew up as a teenager, um, you guilt by association, guilt by association, and it taught us as in the, as the games we, went through the little gang session that if I'm with you, I'm, I need to be down with you. If, if you're with a person, you need to be down with that person. Or you're just wasting some time. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And he was the type of man that provided. He, he didn't like waste. You know, he, uh, we had a lot of kids around our house and he would cook for us also. He, he worked, he provided, he cooked, he made us clean up. Amen. That's a good lesson to learn, y'all. <laughs> but he would let us know, don't leave nothing on your plate. Before you get up from this table, make sure your plate empty and don't put it in the garbage because I'm going to check. Amen. Amen. And that's a good provider to, to let us know at a young age not to waste things. Because you know how we were at a young age. If we didn't like something, we didn't eat it. Well, in my house, you had to eat it. Even if you didn't like it, if it's on your plate, yeah. you had to eat it or you, you, sit, you might sit there an hour and a half, two hours, frowning. But when he'd leave the room, we had, we had a scapegoat. When he would leave the room, he had one brother. He was like a vacuum. You don't want that? Okay. He'd go around the table and anything somebody didn't want, <laughs> he would take care of that, you know. But I'm thankful for my father, the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for my father, the Lord, because he's brought us this far. Uh, I'm not going to be up long, but one thing I know about the Lord, he will bring you out of some things. Everybody sitting here going through something right now today, me, myself included, is going through something and needing the Lord's help. Don't see a way out, but need the Lord's help to get out. I encourage you to keep putting that in the Lord's lap. Amen? Because he can do what man can't do. He can do what man can't do. Amen? So just keep putting it in his lap. Make it a habit. You know, put it in his lap. You know when just think about it like this. You're going down the street and then the car run out in front of you and say, what's the first thing you say? Jesus. 
Jesus. If you can, if you can call him out when at a scared reaction, you can call him out when you're happy. You can call him out when you're joyful. Call on your father. Amen. Call on your father. Rest your cares in him. You know, and you'll find that the more you put them troubles in him, the easier it gets to you. The less bothersome it gets to you. Amen? You know, just continue to trust in the Lord. Continue to grow in him. You never, Mother Bush used to say, you never graduate in this. <laughs> you never, you, you never peek in it to a point where you don't need it anymore or you can't learn anymore. There's so much for us as a people and for us to learn and grow. Amen? I don't care what you're doing, who you are, what professor in front of your name, you still need to learn something. Amen? And so let us continue to consult the Lord with our prayers, with our concerns, be mindful of each other, be mindful of each other, be mindful of each other, amen, because you could be in a worship place doing worship things because we're not here because we picked the Lord. We're here because he picked us. I'll say that again. We're not here because we picked the Lord. We're here because he picked us, amen, amen. I, many of my people I grew up with are not, not, they're not alive anymore. And I thank the Lord he has kept me. I, they weren't no better or worse than me. And I wasn't no better or worse than them. But he picked me to extend my life to this point. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. At this time, I'll bring to the podium, amen, excuse me, Mr. Winston Pearson. Let us receive him with a hearty amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. I want to first give it on to God and to all the fathers in the house. I am a father of ten. And I just thank God for all my children and everything. And I thank God for my bishop. Because I didn't understand what a father, a godly father was until I really met my bishop pastor and he showed me what it was even though I'm older than him but he showed me what a father is and I want to thank you for that mission you know and the song I'm gonna sing is anchored in the Lord how many know y'all can get anchored in the Lord you know you got to have something to hold on to the way the world going now you got to hold on you got to hold on so y'all bear y'all bear with me I'm kind of hoarse today but bear, bear with me Though the storm keeps on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still that hope that lies within me is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that precious place he has prepared but he the storm don't cease and if the wind uh, keeps on blowing in my life my soul has been Storm keeps on raging 
in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still that hope that lies within me is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know oh he'll lead me safely to that precious place he has prepared oh but if the storm don't see And if the wind uh, keeps on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in, in the Lord. Time in this life, we're gonna be tossed by the current in the ways that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I got an anchor, it keeps me steadfast. And I move up despite the time. For if the storm don't cease, and just in case the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul. soul is anchor my soul is anchor in the Lord my soul I say my soul my soul is anchor yeah the pillows may rose the breaker may fast I should not sway because he hold me fast the day uh, clouds in the sky I know it's all right but Jesus is mine set my soul my soul my soul my soul is anchor my soul my soul my soul is anchor my soul is anchor my soul is anchor here for the Lord. Look at somebody say, my soul been anchored. Tell them again, say, my soul been anchored. Amen. Thank you, Minister Pearson. It's a good thing to be anchored in the Lord. How many know you're anchored in the Lord? Part of that song said the billows may roll, breakers may dash. Some of us may not be familiar with billows and breakers, but it speaks of very violent water. And, yeah, you know, I'm not afraid of too many things, but you get out in a big body of water and the waves start crashing like that uh, you can't drink all that water 
Amen. It's a good thing to have an anchor that will stop you from being at the mercy of the waves. And it's a good thing to have the Lord in your life because when the Lord is in your life, you are not at the mercy of the things that you go through. I'm just going to be uh, plain here. It's tough enough going through some things with the Lord on my side. I don't know how people without the Lord do it. I don't, I don't. Who do you pray to when you, you don't have a God to pray to? Who do you lean on when you don't have a God to lean on? Amen. Sometimes mom and dad and friends and, you know, associates, they're not able to help you. But how many know that you can go to God anytime and he will be there for you? So it's a good thing. I certainly want to take this opportunity uh, to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers, each of you in your respective places, both natural and spiritual fathers. Come on, one more time, sisters. Come on, one more time, sisters. Oh, no, come, come on, move the needle, move the needle, move the needle, move the needle. Amen. Amen. Come on, sisters, move the needle. We want y'all to move the needle for the brothers here today. Amen. On Mother's Day, the brothers, you all know we few in the church. Amen. But we make a lot of noise on Mother's Day. Amen. So we're we going to need y'all to make a little more noise in here. <laughs> all right. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, uh, sound man, can I have just a little more on this monitor? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened between them last couple of songs. But I feel something down in here. <clears throat> all right. I would like to take this opportunity again to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers here in our midst. One in particular uh, I want to mention. I want to mention the senior father in the Abundant Love Church. That's in the person of Deacon John Thomas. Man. <laughs> Man. Man. <clears throat> And Deacon Thomas, over the past 20 some odd years, has been an example of faithfulness and dependability. I would say to any young man that if you are trying and looking for a pattern of consistency, dependability, and responsibility, Deacon John Thomas is a great pattern for you. He's a man of his word. Amen. And I, I don't know. I want to be I want to be getting around like him when I get 90. And he said 91. Ooh, I missed a year. I mean, straight, erect. He's a man of discipline and he loves the church. Amen. I, I know that because I have watched him over the years. Amen. And certainly we have uh, enjoyed his fellowship and the pattern that he has given here in our church. And we got some fine brothers here. Amen. I don't want to just talk about him. We got fine brothers here. And each of us in our respective place, it takes all of us to make the church what it is. Amen. Amen. I'd like to certainly let Elder Smith know that we are praying with you today. Man, the first Father's Day without your father is a challenge. Amen. But the Lord is able to bring you through. Amen. Amen. All right. Only because it's Father's Day, Sister Veronica, is you getting away today. <laughs> that's, that's the only reason. That's the only reason you getting away today. Uh-huh. I seen you when you came in. I said, oh, yeah. I said, I said, Ebony, did you? He said, yeah, but when's this supposed to sing today? I said, okay, all right, okay, all right. But, but we're going to hear from Veronica. Amen. How many know that when you have a gift, it's not for you? Look at your neighbor say, that gift that you have is not for you. Now watch this. The Bible, the Bible says that it's for the body or the church to profit with. 
So if you have a gift that you're not using for the church, you are robbing me. Well, what do you call it when somebody takes something that belongs to you? What, what do you call it? Okay, all right. Okay, Sit, sitting there on your chair, cleaning out your wallet or cleaning out your purse. You pull $20 out and set it on the chair next to you. What would you think about the person who came and sat in that chair and then reached over and took what you had and put it down in their pocket? You'd call them a thief, wouldn't you? Why? Because they took something that belonged to you. The gift you have doesn't belong to you. It's for the edification of the person you're sitting next to. Now look at your neighbor and say, what have you done to edify me today? Well, comp compliment them. Tell them how good they look. Smile at them. Amen. We are. Listen, listen, church, listen. We are our brother and sister's keeper. When something is going on with your brother or your sister, it is your responsibility to not only know it, but to be concerned about it. Now look at your neighbor again. Look at him in the eye. See if you can see anything wrong with him. Don't be covering your eyes. I see somebody covering their eyes. Look right in the eye. Listen, listen. It, mean, it means something to have people who are concerned about you when things are not all right. Turn it over to Jesus and you can smile the rest of the day. That's a lie. That song is not true. When you turn it over to Jesus, you still going to have some tough days. And every now and then, it's good to have a person come next to you, put their hand on your shoulder and say, hey, look, it's going to be okay. Amen. Because we need the common and the human touch. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm not going to preach long because it's Father's Day. And, and my son has taken me somewhere today. Amen. <laughs> and I, and I, I want to I wanna go. I want to go wherever he takes me. And I want to enjoy it. Amen. Amen. Not, not many times... Um, not many times that people ask me all the time what do you want for your birthday what do you want for your for Father's Day I can never really come up with something I'm just grateful for whatever uh, people give but this time Ray I seen something I wanted so I told him what I wanted I said I, and I told him at my birthday I said now look I said I'll let you let you back you know get what you want on my birthday. I said, but now I'm going to tell you what I want for Father's Day. He said, what you want? I said, I want some dress sneakers. The shoes that look like dress shoes, but they got the sneaker bottom on them. Because Pastor be on his feet a whole lot here. Amen. And this morning he came in, he said, Pops, I got something for you. <laughs> Amen. So I have my first pair of dress sneakers. Amen. And I'm going to put them into practice on Wednesday night. Amen. All right. So I'd like to say thank you to him and thank you to each of you. Um, um, I, I want to say thank you and I appreciate it. Amen. All right. Let's, let's go here to the word. Uh, uh, howdy do to all of our guests and special guests today. I don't have my glasses on, but I see a couple of young ladies there. Um, I can't see that far, but I want to say welcome to our services this morning. Amen. We're, we're, we're people that love each other and we love the word. Uh, we're very informal here because we believe we are a family. Amen. So thank you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Look like I see Julia this morning. 
Amen. She's here this morning. Uh, I see. I see that starlet sitting next to Ebony. <laughs> Amen. That's Ayana. Amen. All right. I, at at for a minute, I didn't know who that was behind Jackie, but that's Lauren. Amen. She's making the hat statement today. Amen. So we're happy to have her, and we're happy to have Jackie this morning. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a hand, everybody. Did I miss anybody? Amen. Say it again. Oh, how did I miss that? Josephine, amen, have come from the southeast over here uh, to the best church in the land. <laughs> she said, that's right. Amen. All right. Okay. God bless you. Certainly good to see each of you this morning. I need your prayers. You can listen to my voice now and tell I need your prayers. Um, but it's a good word, and I believe it's a word that will help. Amen. All right. I want to call your attention to two passages of Scripture. I'm going to take a verse out of what was read today, Psalm 103, verse number 13. And then I'm going to join that with St. Luke 11 and 2. Psalm 103, 13, out of the Old Testament, and Luke 11 and 2, out of the New Testament. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lolita, and the family. Amen. Amen. Good to see you all. Be encouraged to be encouraged. Family, be encouraged and be encouraged. Anytime you decide to do good, the enemy works against you. But if you keep your faith in God, he will work it out in your favor. Do I have anybody, anybody in here know and can witness to them that the Lord will work it out for you? Man, if you stay on the Lord's side, he'll work it out for you. All right. Amen. I'm glad to have my son here, my couple of my grandsons here. Amen. And, and our, my granddaughter is here this morning. Amen. We've had a couple of conversations this morning. Amen. I got to get a new Sunday school book because she tore a couple pages out the book this morning. Amen. But that's all right. Look, and she know I'm talking about it too. Yeah, Gigi, I'm talking about you, girl. Okay. All right. All right. Y'all allow me to be a grandfather. Amen. Allow me, allow me to be a grandfather. Okay, all right, Psalm 103 and 13, <clears throat> I'm going to read it in your hearing, and it says, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that Fear him. Flip over to the New Testament, to the book of Luke. Chapter 11, I'm going to read verse number 2. And it reads, it says, And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. I'd like to use for a thought this morning. Our Father cares. Can you say with me, our Father, our Father cares? Now look over at your neighbor one more time and say, Your Heavenly Father, your heavenly Father cares for you. Cares. Our Father cares. Our meaning that He's all of our Father. Care means that he is concerned about what's going on in your life. I don't know if you've ever experienced pouring your heart out to somebody 
and it's evident that the person you're pouring your heart out to doesn't care. Sometimes you're crying and you're, you know, especially men, it's hard for us many times to kind of express emotionally what's really going on with us. Say amen, brothers. And then when you finally get up the courage and you get into place where you can let it all out, it is so demoralizing when you're speaking to somebody who could care less what you were saying. They just want you to hurry up and get finished so they can move on to the next thing. And that's the true sign of a person who doesn't care. We don't like to talk to people who don't care. We don't like to ride with people who don't care. We don't like to be with people. Did I say that out loud? We don't like to be with people who don't care. But we love to be in the presence of people who are tuned into us not only to celebrate with us when things are going good, but people who can identify us when things are not going so well. No wonder the Bible says that a friend loves at all times. We stop reading right there, but the rest of that verse says, and a brother is born for adversity. It means something to have somebody close to you when you're going through stuff. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here? Well, the psalmist in verse number 13 uses a natural comparison to help us better understand God. There's a principle that you will find uh, in the Bible. We say first natural, then spiritual. And that is Jesus taught by parables and he taught natural things to relay and instruct spiritual things. And so here, uh, the psalmist uses a natural example to help us better understand God as our Father. So he says, just as a natural father has pity and shows compassion on his children, so the Lord will also show pity, and compassion to his children. Just like a real father, a natural father cares and has compassion for his children, God has compassion for his children. He's the ultimate father. Every father you have here on earth is, uh, you know, some steps down from the ultimate father. God is the ultimate when it comes to fathering. And so uh, the Lord will also show pity. He'll also show compassion, watch this, to his children, to them that fear him. Can I, can I be a little raw here for a minute? Because sometimes we feel like that's what you get to people who don't obey and respect us. Come on. Get off, get off the table, Jimmy. I ain't thinking about you. Get off the table, Jimmy. You can't tell me what to do. Get off the table, Jimmy. You ain't my daddy. Boom. Fall off. A part of you is saying, that's what you get. He pulled little Jimmy down there bleeding with a bump on his head. I'm talking about human nature. But the Lord will pity them. He'll have compassion on them that fear him. Never mistake the wrath of God with the mercy of God. See, the mercy of God says you deserve something, but I'm going to let you pass. But mercy doesn't last forever. And if you don't respond to God, there's a time when the judgment and the wrath of God will take place in your life. That's why the Bible says the day and hour you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. When you hear God, respond to him. Some people think that God is love, and that is true. But some people think he is so much love that he's not going to send some people to hell. But he is. 
actually, he's not sending you to hell. It's your decision. Amen, somebody. So, so the Lord will have compassion on his children just like a natural father will. And to those of us that fear and reverence God, it simply means God cares. God cares what you're going through. To show pity and to show compassion means to be sympathetic to someone else. It means to be able to divorce yourself from what you're feeling at the present time and go into the shoes of the other person and see and consider what they're going through. You know, that's a, that's, that's a shortcoming of people that don't know the Lord because people who don't know the Lord always judge everything from their perspective. But when you know the Lord, every now and then the Lord will say, get out of your shoes, go get in their shoes. And sometimes when you walk a mile in the other person's shoes, you have a tendency to have a little more compassion, a little more pity, a little more concern for them. And so it, it means that God cares. God, God not only cares for us, but when Jesus came, he literally stepped into our shoes the bible says that we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity it means everything that you go through everything that you feel everything that you experience the lord has been through it and because he's been through it the bible says he's able to secure which means help them that are tempted never feel like the lord don't know where you are and what's happening with you and how you feel god knows it all he understands frustration when things don't work like you want it to work he understands depression when you have expectation of people and they disappoint you he knows what it means to be happy and the Bible says he's acquainted, well acquainted with grief. There's nothing you can go through that the Lord hasn't been through. And so he shows pity. He shows compassion. It means that he cares and concerns particularly for the suffering and the misfortunes of others. To have compassion means that you can see somebody having a tough time and instead of jumping on them with both feet, you come alongside to help and share in what they're going through. Amen, somebody. Something I learned as being uh, serving as a chaplain for the police department for a few years and many times the only call that I got was a death call. They only called me when somebody died. And then they gave us the dubious task of going to the house and informing the family that their loved one was gone. It's a very difficult thing to do. But there's something they said to us that made it a whole lot easier. They said there are some occasions where you don't have to know what to say. Just your presence is the ministry. It's called the ministry of presence. And as sisters and brothers in the Lord, no, sometimes you can't go into the nitty gritty of what a person is going through. But just being there, just, just laying your hand on their hand, just putting your hand on their shoulder, just three little simple words that say, I understand. I guess that's two words, ain't it? I understand means a lot. In fact, touch your neighbor and say, I understand. What do you understand? I understand that everything is not roses. I understand that we don't smile every day. I understand. Uh, come on. We have bad hair days. Man, some of those days we don't feel like getting out of the bed. Some of those days, you know, you know, you don't feel like answering the phone. Some of those days, you're not going to the door, no matter who at the door. It means, some, it means something to have someone who can come alongside and identify with what you're going through. And so just like a natural father 
identifies with the sufferings and the misfortunes of his children. The psalmist, the psalmist rather, is telling us that the Lord cares for us. He cares what you're going through. Somebody said a little earlier today, I believe it was Elder Smith said, we all going through something. And that's true. You don't have to tell me what you're going through, but let me see your hand if you're going through something. Now look around the room. Keep your hand up. Look around. I see more hands up than down. And if your hand is down, that means you just came out of something or you on your way into something. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and don't y'all wish we could have changed that verse right there. You're going to have some trouble. You're going to have some things. You're going to have some things that are going to confront you and challenge you. You're going to have some traumatic, some dramatic, some tough times. And it means something to have somebody by your side to sympathize and say, I'm with you. I'm praying your strength in the Lord. Bless his name. Here's what 1 Peter 5 and 7 tells us. It proves to us that God cares. It says, casting all your cares upon him for because he cares for you. You know why you can throw it all on the Lord? Because he cares. The Lord cares. Listen, the Lord cares what's going on with you. He's concerned. With, and I love it, the fact that he cares because many times people care and they can't do anything about it. But God cares and because he cares, he can do something about it. Have you ever seen a person and your heart went out to them? And if you had it, you would help them. But sometimes you don't have it in your possession. But let me tell you about God. God always got it. Look at somebody say, he always got it. God always got it. The cattle on a thousand hills. They belong to him. Amen. The silver is his. The gold is his. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. That means you have a right to go to your father and get what you need. That's why Paul told us in Philippians 4.19. My God and your father shall supply all of your need according to what? His riches and glory. So he cares for you. Look at somebody say, God cares. God cares. Now, and tell them this, and he's, and he's your father. It's enough that he cares, but he's your father. Let, let that sink for a minute. He don't just care for you. God is related to you. As a father, God is responsible for you. Your well-being is God's responsibility. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. Because that's what good fathers do. They take care of their family. Good fathers, come on here. Sisters, I know you can bring home the bacon. Fry it up in the pan. Y'all good now. Y'all can slaughter the hog. Come on, come on. And I'm not against independent. I'm not against independence because you should, you should develop every skill that you have. But why do some things when he has prepared people to do it for you? I, I'm not just, that's just a thought. I don't need no man. I can do this, I can do that. I know you can. But why do it when you don't have to? The right man, the right father will make sure that the home is prepared for. The right father will help take care of the kids. Good fathers change pampers. Man, I got, I got good at it. I got good at it. I got good at it. Come on here. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. Amen. If you take that flap of that pamper down around the hip, then pull the tape up, you get a tight fit. Don't act like I don't know what I'm talking about. 
Listen, because a good father cares for the family. He cares for the children. He cares for their well-being. He, he can't be at peace when the home is awry and out of order. Bless his name. And so, and so God cares for us. He doesn't just care. He's our father. In the Luke verse, these are words of Jesus. If you have a red letter edition, I'm about halfway done. He says, when you pray, say, our father. When you get ready to pray to God, address him as a father family member. Jesus was giving us a model prayer and a pattern for prayer to observe and follow. And, and, and you all know the Lord's Prayer. Much has been made over its content and the request and the type of different prayers that are offered within it. And, and, and I, I want to thank uh, Mother Thomas this morning because her notes helped me with this part of the message. Uh, there are different types of prayer. Adoration talks about how you love God and you want to express that love to him. Amen, somebody. A petition is a formal request. You want to request something from God. And I found with a little research today that petition is not a personal request. It's a request for a group. So when you pray for your church and you pray for your sisters and brothers, for God to do something for us collectively, that's making a petition to God. Amen. Supplication just talks about the fervency that we go to God and pray. It's, it's, it's almost a begging God, pleading with God to do something for us. So we not only have supplication, we have intercession. Intercession is when you go in prayer and you talk to God, not for yourself, but for somebody else. I get so tickled at my grandchildren uh, because when they want to ask me certain things, they will send the other twin to me. If they want something to eat, G3 will say to, Gary, to Grayson, you go ask Papa if we can have some popsicles. But if they want to go to the church and play the drums, then Grayson tells G3, you go ask Papa if we can. That's intercession. <laughs> Amen. You're trying to get to the person who can make the request to get what you need. It's good to have people in the gap for you, praying for you, interceding for you. And so certainly last uh, but not least, uh, there is thanksgiving. And that is the expression of thanking God. For, and, and as a matter of fact, why don't you just throw your hands up now and say, Lord, I thank you. What am I thanking God for? I'm just thanking him for who he is. I'm thanking him for what he did, what he has done. Thank the Lord that I could get up this morning, put my own clothes on. Thank the Lord I can see right now. I'm able to move. I have my being. Thank the Lord. I'm in my right mind today. The Bible says give thanks in all things. It's always the will of God for you to thank God. Thank you, Jesus. And in, in that model prayer, we learn all these different ways how to approach God. How many love God? That's how you adore him. How many need something from God? That's how you supplicate and beg for him. How many want something for your family? That's how you petition God. Bless his name. And of course, we thank him. But out of all those good things, that Jesus revealed to us about prayer, we miss the most important thing which he gave us in the first few words. He said, when you pray, say, our Father. You're not praying to a God that's way off somewhere and doesn't know your name. You're not praying to a God that just creates things and then not concerned about what happens to it after he creates it. We are praying to a God that looks on us and considers us children of his family. Look over and say, hey, sister, hey, brother. Listen.
listen, that's, what, that's why we call people brother and sister in the church because literally, as children of God, we're in the same family. So you have the right, you have the privilege, and you have the opportunity to address God as your father. He's not just God. He's not just the creator, king of the earth. He's not just the judge and the holy one. He's not just the all-righteous and all-knowing one. He's not just the self-sufficient one. He's my dad. He's my father. And so Jesus here taught us to embrace God as our father. As the father of our family, he told us to embrace the relationship with God as father. Now, I got to meddle here a little bit because sometimes we've had strained relationships with our father and we haven't learned exactly how to take advantage of the father relationship. So I'm just going to throw a little of these things out, not in my notes now. But when you haven't been fathered, you're lacking some skills. There's some things you need to be able to get out of your father that you won't be able to get out of your father if you don't have these skills. Let me tell you, let me show you how to get anything out of your father. Please him. Trust me. If daddy say clean your room, and your room is unclean, and you approach dad for something, dad can't give you what you're asking for because all he see is your undone room. Your undone room says, I don't respect your authority. It is rebellion to say, you can't tell me. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. I told y'all this wasn't in my notes, but y'all should know by now I'm not just a no preacher. But if dad says do it and you do that, and then you go to dad and say, may I have such and such and so and so. He might think about not giving it to you, but if he look in and see that room, you have gotten in his good graces. And when you get in his good grace, you'll find his favor. You need to understand that God will pity those that fear and revere him. He'll pity and have compassion on those that obey his word, reverence him as God, and obeys what he says. Bless his name. Amen. You want to be a dear child. You want to be an obedient child. An obedient child. It doesn't mean that he loves you more than the other children. It just means you've gotten into his good grace. How many want to be in the good grace of God? When you want to be in the good grace of God, scriptures like this become golden nuggets to you. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright that's incentive enough to do what God says because he will not hold back good things from you if you walk in obedience to his word ain't nobody saying nothing here and so he's not just the judge the king the righteous one we have been taught to recognize him at father that being said I want you to know I, I want to encourage you that if you haven't had a positive relationship with your father or presently don't have a positive relationship with your father or if your earthly father didn't fulfill all your expectations or handle all of his responsibilities and if your father like mine is not here today and you can't call him or talk to him meet him or have a conversation with him I want you to know you yet have a loving heavenly father that father is willing and able to meet every fathering need that you have and he can bridge every gap in your life just because you didn't get fathered as a child is not an excuse to stay unfathered 
Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I understood like a child. But when I became a man, when I became an adult, I put away, can I say it like this, childish ways. Because you can't pout with God and get your way. You can't throw a tantrum. With, ain't nobody saying nothing to hear. You can't throw a tantrum with God and get your way. Amen. You have to reason. He said, come now, let us reason together. You have to come before the Lord. You have to be transparent. You can't hold anything. You have to admit where you're lacking. And if you can admit where you're lacking, God is able to help you in that area. Look at somebody and say, the Lord cares. The Lord cares. Yes, he does. But just like every other relationship, our relationship with our Father requires time. It requires interaction, and it requires attention. You can't expect to be close to God as your father if you don't spend any time with him. You can't have a close relationship. I, you, you know, I, I, oh, Lord, please, Jesus, please. I know sometimes we have strained relationships with our fathers. But you will not fix the relationship keeping your distance. Let me say it again. Me and the Lord, we, 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 we wrestling up here because them ain't in my notes. Not just a strained father, a strained relationship. Strained relationships don't get fixed by distance. They don't get fixed by lack of association. And they certainly don't get fixed by lack of communication. If you want a relationship to develop and to grow closer, you're going to have to have some interaction. There's going to have to be some communication. There has to be some dealings with each other so that we can learn more about each other to be able to, to, to successfully get along with each other. Let me, let, me, let me show you what God, let me show you what, what God does, what God does. In, in Genesis 1, it is Elohim. It is God, the creative one, who steps from behind the curtain of nowhere, Josephus says, and says, let there be light, and there was light. So it's the creative God in chapter number one who creates the world. But then when you show up in chapter number two of Genesis, it's not God Elohim. It is God Adonai. It's the Lord God showing a relationship. What you find about God is that God keeps stepping towards us so that we can know him. Jehovah Rapha reveals that he's the God that heals. Jehovah Nisi reveals that he's the God that represents our banner. Jehovah Shalom is the God who, re and when we learn these things about the character and the nature of God, we learn to know him better. And how many know the Lord wants you to know him better? Amen. What do you do to people when you want them to know you better? Who people went to drop in their head? Come on here. Ever meet somebody and you want them to know you better? I'll tell you what you do. You start uncovering yourself to them. You start revealing to them the things you like. The things that you're in. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. You start revealing to them the things that you're interested in. And so God, the relationship with God, just like us, requires us to know more about God. And to know more about God, he reveals himself. God went to great lengths to let us know who he was. 
He's up in heaven. He's holy. He's a spirit. He without body. And we're on the earth. We're earthy. We got a body. We don't have the concept of what's going on in heaven. And he wanted us to know him so bad that he prepared a body. He came down and walked among us so that we could know him. He wanted to show us that he cares. And so God uncovers himself. He uncovers. He wants us to know him. And I think that we should be doing all that we can to know God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ who brings and reveals to us the most intimate, the most meaningful definition of our relationship with God. He informs us, he instructs us to approach God and address God as our father. Look at somebody say, we're in the family of God. This Father's Day, I want to encourage you to know God intimately. Don't just have a surface knowledge of who God is. But we want to know him closely. The, the word intimate, uh, by definition, means to know him in a private and a very personal way. It means to know someone and not just know them on the surface, but know them in great detail. That means know, know the small idiosyncrasies of an individual. No, you, you know, uh, uh, it means to know somebody not just with great detail, but to know them in great detail. God wants us to know him like that because the Father cares for us. And he's done much for us to know it. He's given us his word. He's given us his son, and he's given us his spirit. The Bible says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, but the scriptures are they which testify of me. If you really want to know who God is, you have to develop this intimate relationship with the word of God. When the word of God becomes pinnacle in your life, when the word of God becomes very important and when it becomes, as Job said, more necessary than my natural food. When the word of God becomes one with you and you take delight in the word and delight in the things of God, the spirit of God will reveal to you the character and the person of God. And if you really get a glimpse of God's character, he is irresistible. We all have friends, don't look around now, who were good friends to us until they found out something about us. And when they found out something about us, their friendship and their attitude and their perspective of us changed. But God is not like that. God already knows everything about you. And he still loves you anyway. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. Aren't you glad? Watch this. Aren't you glad there's nothing you can do to make God love you any less? Because your father cares. And so I want to encourage you. Get to know your father, your heavenly father. Spend time with him. Interact with him. Talk to him. This Father's Day, don't just talk to your natural father. Talk to your heavenly father. See what his direction is for your life and which direction he wants you to go. And I guarantee you that when you spend time with him and you find out how much he cares it will give you an attraction to him that will mirror the attraction he has for us. Heads about. Because he was thinking about us when we weren't thinking about him. Amen. The Lord loves you and the Lord cares for you. Well, Pastor, uh, you just don't know what kind of life I've had. You don't know what I've been into. There's no way God could love me. 
But the scripture says that God commended his love towards us in that, watch this, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means the sacrifice to love you and make you his own was before you got saved. It was before you repented. It was before you confessed Jesus Christ. He loved you when you didn't love yourself. He loved us when we were unlovable. That's how much he cares. So why wouldn't he care now? The Bible says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And So I want to pray with you today. Maybe a little heavy this Father's Day or may have some intense relationships with your father, but I want you to understand that your heavenly father is not here, not just here uh, for what you're going through, but he's here also to right some of the wrongs and to bring the proper order to the things that you are experiencing. And so just by an act of faith, stand where you are. Let's pray together. My father was a good man. I would love to have a few conversations with him, but I can't now. But I have a heavenly father I can talk to. I have one that cares. Reminds me of the song that says, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, I was worn, and I was sad. But you know what? I found in him. I found a place to rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. I found in him a resting place. And in that resting place, the Lord made me glad. Bless his name. That's right. Stand to your feet. I'm still waiting on you. Now lift your hands to God. I'm here to tell you today that even though you are going through things and it would appear that God is not present, I'm here to tell you that God cares. Not only does God care, but according to his time and according to his schedule, he is going to intercede for you and work things out in your favor. Because God will not allow his name to disappear in obscurity. There are certain things God has to do for you because his name is riding on it. Moses told God, said, you can't do that because the heathen nations will think you were not able to take care of your people. I want you to know that God is certainly able to take care of you. And when the timing is right, God is going to step in and intercede for you so that it benefits you and that his name gets glory. Father, in Jesus' name now, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you are a father that cares for us. You are a father that's concerned. You are a father that is involved. And even though you are our God, we recognize that you are a close, caring father. That you care for the things that go on in our lives. And even as natural fathers pity and have compassion on their children, we thank you, Father, that you have compassion that you have feeling and that you have concern with the things that we are going through. Father, here's my prayer right now because there are people on the floor right now that are experiencing situations and circumstances that they need you to intercede for. We've been looking to men and we've been looking to institutions, but there are certain things, God, that if you don't do them, they won't be done. But you are unable, God. You're an able father. You are a father that cares for his children. 
And so, Father, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and by the truth of your word, now we pray the power, the anointing of the Holy Ghost to go into every situation, every circumstance, every condition that exists now and work it out for their good and for your glory. When you work it out, Lord, let it bring glory to your name and benefit to your people in Jesus name now those of you that are on your feet I want you to open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you thank you for interceding for me thank you for stepping in for me thank you father for making a way for me thank you that you're my father thank you that I can depend on you and that your word is true in Jesus name and the Lord's people said thank God amen and amen my last appeal is if you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, it's an easy thing to be saved. Doesn't even take long to be saved. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says thou shalt or you will be saved. And so if you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, Pastor, what do you mean in the pardon of your sins? Have you received him as your personal savior? Because just being in church won't get you into heaven. Just singing in a choir won't get you into heaven. Amen, church. It is receiving the sacrifice that Jesus made for our sins. And if you're here today and you want to be saved, just kind of raise your hand where you are. And I'll, I'll send somebody to where you're sitting. I won't even pull you up in front of everybody. Because when I got saved, I wasn't even at church. I got saved in the living room of my mother's house. Because that's where the word found me. And that's where I respond. It's a good thing to respond in church. But you don't necessarily have to be in church to respond to the word. Amen. Wherever you hear the voice of the Lord, that's where you respond to it, and that's where you receive him. Is there one today? Amen. That must mean everybody's saved. Amen. So if the rapture happened in the next few minutes, we'll all be in heaven, right? That should be your prayer. Incidentally, there are probably going to be some people trying to have church after we go on. Amen. Ain't, ain't nobody saying nothing here, but I just told the truth. Amen. So you want to make your calling and your election sure. Amen. All right. Clap your hands right there, and I'm going to finish right there. Amen. Say amen to Elder Smith. Amen. We want to call Deacon Thomas up to have some words. Amen. 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 That's a sharp 91, I tell you. Praise you. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord. It's been a long time. Kind of had a hard time, but I'm coming out of it. I'm going to come out of it. So, yes. My wife, she's so helpful. She's been my eyes. Can't see, but I'm still trying. I'm still trying. I will not give up. I'm going to work. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it. Amen. 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 We thank God for you, Deacon Thomas. Uh, Mother, you had some comments or presentations? All right. Bring it on. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Thanking God for the word on today. Amen. We want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers on today. Amen. Can we give them another hand clap? Come on, let's make it big. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And we just have a couple of presentations that we would like to make. First of all, we're going to have joyful baskets baskets. Sister Cynthia is going to come at this time. After Sister Cynthia, if there are any other presentations um, or if you would like to come up and have 
um, a happy Father's Day greeting to Bishop or to the fathers, certainly feel free.